Hi, this is Luke with Freckled Hen. Today I want to talk to you about greenhouse pest management. So we've got our ornamental plants in the greenhouse, um, keeping them here over the winter time. And we've been dealing with some pests of our own, uh, aphids especially. So I want to talk to you about how we've been dealing with aphids on our greenhouse plants and also some strategies for dealing with other pests that you might encounter in your greenhouse. Okay, so what are aphids? Aphids are small, soft-bodied insects. They're usually green. <clears throat> they could also be brown. Um, but they like to live on, um, it's called the terminal or the um, kind of the, the tip of plant stems. Um, you'll usually see them on the undersides of leaves or on buds. Um, they, they really like to feed on um, you know, unopened flower buds. And I am going to pull one off just to show you. Um, don't know if you can see this here, but um, there are aphids on this bud. You can see there are green and there are some black colored aphids. Do you see those? Um, and what aphids do is they actually, they, they suck uh, plant sap and then they will exude what's called a honeydew, which can attract ants. So sometimes if you see ants on your plants, they're really just feeding on the honeydew from the aphids. Um, and then the honeydew, it'll actually, it can leave kind of a black splotchy pattern on your leaves. So if you see that, that's a sign that you have aphids. Um, they really like greenhouse conditions because it's, it's dry. Usually rain will wash aphids off plants, but it's dry in the greenhouse. And then also in the greenhouse, there aren't any natural enemies. You know, outside in your garden, uh, there are a lot of wasps, also ladybugs, praying mantids, um, lacewings. There are a lot of predators um, that will feed on aphids. But in the greenhouse, you don't have all those uh, predator insects. Um, so aphids can just, you know, go to town. Um, that's what aphids look like. Uh, mites are even smaller than aphids. They almost look like, you know, tiny... Uh, little microscopic spiders. Um, you can see webbing, um, the really small webbing uh, that spider mites make. Um, and, you know, they'll also tend to accumulate on the, the um, kind of the apex, um, the tip of the plants. Um, and, you know, you can see if there are a bunch of them, they'll just be covering a leaf and they're just like really small specks. So that's mites. Um, white flies are, are pretty easy to spot. They're small flies uh, that are white, uh, which is where they get their name. Uh, and then fungus gnats, um, you know, are like, they're little gnats. Um, they tend to be more prevalent if, you know, you have a lot potting soil that stays wet or you have wet spots. Um, they'll actually emerge from larva in the soil. Um, I will say, you know, for you, probably the most common greenhouse pests are going to be aphids and mites. Um, so I'll tell you how to deal with those if you have them in your greenhouse. So before I talk about what to do if you have aphids or mites in your greenhouse, let's talk about how to keep them from becoming a problem. So prevention is always the best strategy when it comes to pest control in the garden or the greenhouse. And in this case, um, in our greenhouse scenario, one mistake that uh, we made was that the hibiscus um, that we brought into the greenhouse actually had aphids on it uh, before we brought them in. And so we actually brought aphids into the greenhouse. And I, I was thinking, you know, I, I know there are aphids, but we'll, we'll spray and we'll keep them under control. Uh, but it's been very difficult keeping our aphids under control in here. Um, and that problem I made was I brought in infested plants um, into the greenhouse. So, you know, that, <laughs> that was not a good choice. Um, and, you know, for you, if you have any plants 
that have a pest problem, maybe you see a lot of aphids or mites on your plants already, I would just leave them outside, sacrifice those plants, don't bring them into the greenhouse because those pests are going to become even worse and they're harder to control in the greenhouse than they would be outside. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is just take care of the pests as soon as you see them. And I'll talk about some strategies for that. But um, with these greenhouse pests, you know, you'll go from just a, a small population um, of maybe 10 to hundreds, thousands, you know, in a matter of days. Um, they reproduce very quickly. And in the greenhouse, they have ideal conditions to be able to reproduce. Like I said, they don't have any natural enemies in the greenhouse. So um, there's nothing to keep their population in check. So you definitely want to take care of them as soon as you see them. Um, and then some other good uh, kind of horticultural considerations with plants is to water your plants appropriately. Don't overwater your plants and don't underwater your plants. That will stress the plants and it'll make them more susceptible to these pests. The plants themselves do have some natural defenses that can kick in. Uh, but like us, you know, if the plants are already stressed, they're not uh, going to be functioning, you know, at their highest level and uh, they're not going to be able to um, elicit those natural responses as effectively. Um, and so in addition to watering, fertilization, you really want to... Um, you want to keep your plants fertilized, but not over fertilized. Over fertilized plants um, are, are really tasty to aphids. Um, aphids really like that young, uh, tender, uh, quick growing tissue at the, the tip of the stem. So if you over fertilize with nitrogen, you're going to get a lot of new growth. Aphids love that. And um, while you want to make sure to fertilize your plants well, um, you know, make sure that there aren't any deficiency symptoms, you know, don't over fertilize because uh, that can make the problem worse. So first off, um, if you're just starting to see an issue arise, let's say with aphids, um, you could actually introduce natural enemies to the greenhouse. So the nice thing about the greenhouse, it's a controlled environment. And so if you release, um, insects like ladybugs, like um, lacewings, um, you know, they don't have anywhere else to go. So they're just going to stay in the greenhouse and feed on those pests. So those two beneficial insects, uh, ladybugs and lacewings, are, you know, fairly easy to order from mail order catalog catalogs. Um, and they um, do a really good job eating a lot of aphids specifically. Um, so just to show you what this looks like, if you if you buy ladybugs in the mail, they're going to come in a little bag. Uh, you know, you'll probably get like 500 or 1,000. Um, and um, so here are some ladybugs. Uh, you know, you would just kind of, you know, sprinkle these around um, the greenhouse and especially try to put them on plants that have a lot of aphids. Um, and let them do their work. Um, ladybug adults are good. Um, it's actually the, the larva. Um, so once these ladybugs mate and have babies, the ladybug larva um, actually are, are even more voracious aphid eaters. Um, but releasing beneficial insects like this can help. Okay, so that, that would be a first step um, to try, especially for aphids. For mites, uh, you can buy beneficial mites, um, which, you know, are really small, um, would come in a vial, most likely, um, and you could sprinkle those on some of your plants. Uh, you know, so that would also be an option if you have mites as well. So unfortunately, even with releasing beneficial insects, you might come to the point where you have to spray your pests. Uh, in our case, we've both been releasing uh, ladybugs and also I've been spraying regularly two to three times a week to control the aphids that we have in our greenhouse. So fortunately, there are several very effective controls, uh, many of which are organic. So I'm going to talk about a few of those 
with you. So first off, I want to talk about insecticidal soap. So here I have a safer brand, insect killing soap. Um, you know, you most likely want to get a concentrate um, that you're going to dilute in water and put in a sprayer, which I'll show you. So, you know, in this case, this formulation, um, if you look on the label, it's effective against a lot of uh, greenhouse pests, uh, including spider mites, aphids, uh, earwigs, thrips, whitefly, uh, grasshoppers, scale, uh, leaf hoppers. Um, so um, it has pretty broad effectiveness against a lot of different greenhouse pests. Um, and it's you know very safe to use. Um, this is actually an organic formulation. You can see that Omri label. Um, but uh, this insecticide soap, it's going to be very easy for you to find at a garden store, um, a greenhouse supply company, um, or you can order it online. Um, so this is probably going to be your number one uh, material for defense. Um, so like I said, um, aphids, mites, white flies, um, insecticidal soap will work. This formulation, um, and you want to read on the label, whatever you buy, it might be a little different, but this mixes at 2.5 fluid ounces per gallon. Um, so that's how you're going to mix it in the sprayer. Um, another effective and easy to find product is neem oil. So uh, neem is actually a type of tree. This oil is extracted from the tree um, and the oil is just a natural insecticide. Um, and it's actually effective against uh, fungus and then mites as well. Um, so, you know, these two um, are effective against similar insect pests. And the reason I have both of them is I like to, to switch off. Um, you know, one thing that can happen if you use the same spray against an insect over and over again, um, you can actually develop resistance in that insect population. Um, so, you know, having two different materials that you, you know, rotate back and forth can help uh, prevent your, you know, insect population in the greenhouse from becoming resistant to that one material you're spraying. So these are my two go-to for greenhouse pests, neem oil and insecticidal soap. Um, there's actually a third product. I don't have it on hand, um, but it you can, you can find it by looking for horticultural oil. One brand is JMS Stylet Oil. And um, it is a, an oil uh, that's formulated to essentially smother um, mites and aphids. Um, and again, it's very safe to use. You can find organic formulations and there are also conventional formulations out there. Uh, so that's a, that's a third option for a spray. So when it comes to spraying in the greenhouse, I really like this small solo brand sprayer. It's a one liter sprayer. Um, see, it has a, a pump action, um, and the thing I like about it, it, it's small enough. I can, I can fill up this one liter tank and that's all I need to spray all the plants in here. Um, it's, it's well made, very easy to use. Um, so I would recommend it. Solo is a very good brand. You can find other sprayers. Um, you could even use, you know, a spray bottle. Um, you know, a common spray bottle that you'd use for countertop cleaner or something like that. Um, but this one I think is especially good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this up and kind of show you what that looks like to spray plants in the greenhouse. Okay, so I filled up the solo sprayer with water. I didn't want to mix in pesticide uh, right now. Uh, but, you know, if I were uh, actually spraying for pests, I would fill it with water first and then add the appropriate amount of either, you know, the neem oil or the insecticidal soap and um, then just kind of shake it around. You'll notice the insecticidal soap r really foams up, you know, like dish soap. So um, I like to add it last so that it doesn't get too foamy um, in the container. But, you know, once I have my uh, insecticide in the sprayer, 
mix it up. Um, you know, this version, you pump it to pressurize it. And then, um, you know, you want to have a, a good spray pattern. Um, and then what I would do is just spray the whole plant and especially focus on um, those, the, the tips, like I was saying, um, the tips of the stems and branches where the aphids tend to be concentrated. And then another thing um, that's really important, aphids and also mites tend to congregate on the undersides of leaves. So you definitely wanna make sure to get underneath the leaves. The thing I like about the sprayer is that I can actually tilt the nozzle up and then easily get underneath the leaves. So anyway, I would go around spraying all the plants like that. Want to get full coverage, you know, the tops and the bottom of the leaves. Um, and I've been spraying all our plants in the greenhouse um, because, you know, we have seen aphids migrate from um, like the a hibiscus, you know, where they started, they've been migrating to other plants. So um, I've been spraying all the plants in the greenhouse. And again, I've been spraying two to three times a week um, because aphids will continue to multiply. And, um, you know, if you spray, you, you'll kill the adults, but then there will be unhatched eggs that will then hatch new aphids. So you need to spray, you know, two or three days later to get those uh, young aphids that hatch from the eggs. Um, and, you know, it could be that you get to the point where you get the population under control and you can stop spraying. Um, for us, it's just been an ongoing problem. Um, I've definitely noticed the population of aphids decrease. It's become less of a problem, uh, but it has required, you know, regular spraying over the past few months. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. Um, and again, uh, keep, keep an eye out for your greenhouse pests, monitor your plants regularly, look underneath the leaves. These greenhouse pests are very small, so um, you know, pay, pay close attention. Um, and then you know, if you do notice them, um, you could go the beneficial insect route uh, with ladybugs or lacewings. Um, and then you know, if you need to spray some good uh, materials are insecticidal soap, neem, or horticultural oil. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful, and happy gardening.